Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 24th episode of season one of Shivnada Foundation Conversations. Shivnada Foundation Conversations is an initiative to inject much needed positivity into our lives and to create ripples of inspiration in these difficult times. My name is Anubha from the Shivnada University. In this series, we have hosted leaders from diverse fields who have shared their life's lessons with us. These guests have included Nobel Prize winner Kailar Satyarthi, badminton champion P.V. Sindhu, former CEO of Vodafone Arun Sareen, award-winning author William Dalimple, and internationally acclaimed artist Shubha Mudgal. We have so far hosted 23 guests and their sessions have been seen over 20 million times. We hope that these conversations inspire you and uplift your spirits in your time of isolation. Well, today, we have a unique panel with three fantastic guests who are driving brands with a purpose. Let me welcome them on screen. Raul Rai, co-founder, Nicobar and director, Good Earth. May we have Raul? Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Samrat Bedi, Executive Director, Forest Essentials. And Sanjay Hi, Gar everybody. Hi, Samrat. And Sanjay Garg, Founder, Raw Mango. Hi, Sanjay. Thank you, everyone. So let's, let's start by giving a quick introduction of our speakers while they don't really need an introduction. Our first panelist, Raul, was raised in India but spent almost half of his life in the US where he studied at the Boston University and the Harvard Business School. He then worked at top tier investment banks and private equity companies in the US before returning to India. Nicobar was born out of Raul's dream to create a company in India that sits at the intersection of design and tech while inspiring India to modernize without, not ne without necessarily westernizing. Today, Nicobar has 14 stores and a very strong online footprint catering to the aspirations of the modern Indian consumer. Moving on to Samrat, our second guest. He was working at the Standard Chartered Bank in New York when his mother, Meera Kulkarni, saw an opportunity in the evolving natural and organic skincare market in India and launched Forest Essentials in the year 2000. Driven by his passion to present India at its very best, he returned to India to help her expand Forest Essentials and help set up the processes for this brand that imbibes the spirit identity of Indian Ayurveda, a 6,000 year old science. Forest Essentials today has over 100 stores in India and is present in over 400 hotels and resorts with eyes firmly fixed on global expansion. Well, our next speaker, Sanjay, growing up in the village of Umumbariku, Rajasthan. Sanjay's appreciation for aesthetics began with the sensibilities of rural India at an early age. His innovations are grounded in opinions rooted in India's dynamic cultural and social landscape, which is reflected in his design at Raw Mango. His unique designs have been exhibited at the Museum of Modern Art New York and at the Victoria Albert Museum, London. A very warm welcome to all three of you. Well, we have a lot to cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dive right in. Today we are discussing how brands can create growth without sacrificing purpose. So Samrat, I'm going to start with you. How has Forest Essentials created such a large international brand while straying true to the age-old Ayurvedic recipes and ensuring that the products are non-toxic, cruelty-free, and without any synthetic elements? Samrat, this is for you. Thank you, Anubha. I think, uh, you know, the premise of a brand is very, very important. Um, you know, talking about growth, talking about opportunity. I think every brand has to bring a certain USP to the table. In terms of Forest Essentials, you know, we always started with the premise of having a brand that is very high on quality, stays true to its roots, and more importantly, it represents India in terms of heritage, it represents India in terms of what we have. And I think, you know, long before Make in India became fashionable and India started becoming such a large, you know, superpower globally, we actually worked towards, uh, you know, representing India on a global scale. 
the brand in terms of its um, you know in terms of its promise has always maintained a very high quality we've always used ayurveda as a base and the entire usp that we bring to the table was to take the goodness of ayurveda and then actually translate it to a modern easy to use method ayurveda you know as we all know has already been such a you know everybody knows about the efficacy everybody knows about it from history from tradition from your own families but using it today in its true and purest form is a very difficult exercise so the idea was to take that use those pillars and then actually make it in a modern day method of 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 actually delivery that's that's one important aspect i think the other important aspect is we also decided that we would grow this brand in india before venturing outside so you know we spent the last uh, 20 years building the brand in india and today you know we are amongst the leading players in this segment the idea was then to take it on to a global market uh, while we haven't physically gone outside the country we are currently exporting to about 120 countries outside so it shows you the promise it shows you the potential that that you know one has to not only represent ayurveda but to represent india as well um the other part that you know wanted to talk about was and what 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 part of the question was on on the supply chain i think you know as a company grows it is so important to make sure that your back end keeps up with your front end because ultimately if you don't then your quality suffers you know then your processes suffer and you don't want to have any shortcuts to that especially you know in the segment that we are in beauty there can be no compromise so we have been working for a number of years not only in how we are actually growing our own ingredients but also with a number of small farmers across the country to make sure that the supply chain grows along with us Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you for that, uh, Samrat. So now moving on to Sanjay. Sanjay, raw mango has been instrumental in reviving the traditional Indian textile designs like chanderi, brocade, mushroom, curry, making it into an urban trend now. So how has raw mango, while staying authentic to our age-old traditions? Well, uh, we I. as you know uh, after farming the the weaving community is the second largest in india and i only wonder when i pass out from an ifc that why there is a gap that every uh, at least during that time when i just came out from an ifc that i found out there is a big vacuum there was not even a single sari brand and i could not understand we have an indian tradition how do we hold we have very skilled labor we it gives us the usp we are very unique to the world and to ourselves and why we not able to make in a brand new luxury product why is the handloom is looked down and is seen as a hangi or a khadi it was a kind of an outdated thing when i started i mean that's how i realized it and to me the tradition was kind of a passe i never thought tradition is a passe to me what is to me tradition is a future it's a flowing river because what is the tradition we're talking about is a tradition of being naked and we uh, definitely we broke it once and we all wore clothes or tradition of victoria period or or morya or mughal so what are we talking about so i i realize the problem is that you know there are uh, the the so for my generation that time they do buy some products but they was not much wearing it so they were wearing it because of sympathy and um, identity but they were not really wearing it how does then what was the reason why they not wearing it? i think they were not representing themselves so they could see they're they're the older generation it but they were not in themselves in there so how do we communicate today's generation i think that has come through various changes is that what is tradition is the making of a sari or a visual abasing of a sari or a tying of a sari so what is that tradition and what is that modern and what do we what do we change about it so it's a mix of many things you know and at the same time you asked me that about the diversity question you know I don't really think so that we could scale up in a way that you know I want whole world to wear it and there because that wasn't a possibility in my case so what we had done we maximized and then let's say to 300 looms but after that I had to move on to another sector let's say mushroom or varanasi brocade so there are different pockets in india so what handloom give me give me a scale but at the same time it give a such kind of a uniqueness and visuality because every product is made by a one one single person and that was kind of the unique message right wow wow that's fantastic to know it's fantastic okay uh, rahul coming to you now at nikobar 
Now, Nicobar is a part of a movement of using Indian aesthetics with contemporary global sensibilities. What has been your secret behind the growth and why you know, you've been showcasing there to the world? Tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> Anubha, you know, when, when I think about that, I think part of it is just an expression of our personal journey. And, and therefore, I find that we're just living out something that has 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 come from you know how we've grown up and by that what i mean is both my wife and i because she's a co-founder simran and so i just want to point out three things for the audience that it's really important to look back on your life and, and the dots at some point connect and that's what's kept nikobar going so looking backwards as you mentioned i came back to india in 2005 after having spent about 18 years outside and three things happened that I want to share, which led to the founding of Nicobar. The first was I was very lucky in America to have a lot of mentors at work. And so I saw a little, uh, quite a few different cultures. And when I came back to India, I didn't find enough mentorship at work. Uh, and, and I wanted to create my own culture of what work is supposed to be. And I can talk more about that later. So there was this deep desire to create a certain way of working. The second was, I married Simran, whose mother started Good Earth, whose brother ran Royal Enfield. And I saw this family, which was incredible in how they focused on the long term and, and yet had a lot of family values uh, and a professional long term approach and great pride in being Indian. Um, and so that notion of these values, family values, creating something from India for the world was the second dot that came to my life rather than culture. And third, I met Sadhguru and I started meditating and I discovered the role of silence reflection in Indian culture. And that led me to have this vision of inspiring India to modernize without necessarily westernizing. And so I think our two anchors became, and I realized that, you know, when I came back, I realized thanks to, you know, everyone around here, India is just much more than Bollywood, cricket and kitsch. There's so much more over here. And, and I didn't find that expression enough. Um, and, and so we created Nicobar with that intent. And I'd say two anchors. First is showing contemporary design that is anchored in India. So we take a kulhar from a railway station and interpret it in a modern way. Uh, or we take chanderi and we make dresses from chanderi. Uh, so that's how we interpret India in a modern way. And then the second is just our personal journey of living life and building a brand mindfully. And I use that word different from sustainably in that just being a little more aware of your choices, you know, doing it in a way that is accessible, doing it in a way that's fun, not too, too serious, yet reflective and aware. So I'll just stop with this, but on our third birthday, we decided to go as much plastic free as we can, and we went 85% plastic free. On our fourth birthday, because we are so inspired by nature, we decided to plant trees. So that connection to just being mindful and thankful to the environment that we are a product of, has kept our, you know, I, I think it's very easy making decisions when your purpose is clear. The challenge always is matching the growth aspirations of your team and, and having the long-term perspective because these results don't come overnight. Brilliant. What, a, what a great note to end this first thing. First thing. You know, Samrud, Rao, Sanjay, today we have primarily our students, our teachers, our faculty, our alumni who joined uh, to hear you from all over the world. World, an inspirational story of what modern young that is now. I'm going to take a little dig on that, asking a question for audience, little glimpse of raw mango and the discussion. To play the role. Okay. So, what, so what now is, um, may I request my team to play the video? Okay. Okay, we, because we are having a bit. Uh, 
Venezuela. Yeah, she left. Oops. Wow, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So this, as everybody in the audience can see, is the raw mango video with the, the amazing designs. You know, Sanji, I'm going to talk to you when the, when the video gets over about how do you find the inspirational to you know, okay. constantly be creative and innovative with your designs and your product uh, offering. You know, no, Sanjay, uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's the whole, um, I think my whole journey is about questioning myself and people evolving. I don't think so. I'm here with the one agenda and that's how I started 10 years ago. So I always question what is this? What is India, first of all? What is the communication? When I got into this world of textile and fashion, I always question what are the reference to us? I really didn't find any reference. Whatever we had, there was a very particular kind of fashion photography. There was a very particular kind of model and photographer as well. And then the way we show the wedding and things like that. I really wanted to say, I mean, A, I came from a village, and B, I always find it a there was not a connect, you know, I really wanted to say my story. So I tell you something about the he, uh, I will tell you that how did it happen? My, my brother married to a second girl and that's how I introduced to Sikh culture and it was very different to what I heard of stereotypes. And that was my introduction to it. And I really wanted to say that story to the world. And even the first video of that, it wasn't even a visual image. I remember one of the uh, uh, you know, Punjab, um, during this, then I got to know Punjab, only 49% is with India and then 51% with Pakistan. And they had a shared history, culture, the way they wear, the, the garment, the silhouette, the jewelry, the music, the language, Javan. There's so much of common um, in both the world. And I remember listening to one of the uh, uh, singer, uh, a radio interview of 1970s. I, I love that voice, you know. Yeah. And and I didn't want to say that through he, and I could not say that Sanjay Gurd saying that. Like, why are you getting married? Getting married to, to wear jewelry or are you wearing jewelry because one is getting married? So I created a character of he, which is, there's no photo. And she, it's kind of a radio. There are two girls are talking. And she's saying that I don't care about it. I don't, I just want to care that jewelry. I don't, I want to wear jewelry. No, jewelry is supposed to wear me. So that's how it started. And there were not a single model who was involved in it. Wow. I asked my brother, sister-in-law, all of that. I said, will you please come? And I and that happened planned in, in Patiala. They all came in. And all the girls, I was very big to me then. I mean, the older girl liked whiskey. And that's how they had it. They all had a glass of whiskey. And the whole shoot start. And there was a big party. And there was a big gita. And the music ceremony happened. And we didn't really bother how the you know fashion should look what is shown in India and how it need to be have a palace wall behind or the model or a fashion photographer. I didn't really think of it, you know. And that was the many different stories. Mm -hmm. He was one of it. There was a cloud people where uh, the, where I shot it in Meghalaya. Meghalaya means uh, home for the cloud. And I literally went to Kirapunji, where mm -hmm. you know is known for most people with the same fall. And we also had girls from Shillong. And to me, it is kind of that world. We have come from that world to this, this world. And then everyone was in that film was from Northeast. And what is this idea of India? You know, there's a one time no Indian, South Indian, or, or black, or dark, and skin color, or breed, breed, age. So I challenged all with different kind of visual images. We never had for five or six years ever a fashion photograph. There was always the generalist someone who was shooting that. So many different things. So inspiration is not always something very exciting. Sometimes there's an anger, there's sometimes a dialogue. 
there's some sort of stereotype you want to break. Sometimes there's a myth you do not like about it. Sometimes you don't like it that why the lime green, which is like a fluorescent green, why is the Dawaru a beautiful? Why can't be sophisticated? And why bright colors are not the ones sophisticated? Mm -hmm. so many things, you know, you're addressing many things. And why, to, why is very important to wear too much of jewelry on the wedding? So who decide that, you know? So many different things and through many different communication in the world. Wow, fantastic. You know, Anuba, if I can, I just want to say I'm a big fan of Sanjay Garg saris. Uh, I don't wear saris, <laughs> so I, give to wife, I give to my wife, and it's just stunning. I'd say one, two, his visual language is so beautiful. I mean, it evokes India, and yet it's so contemporary, absolutely. so fresh. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, when I think of Sanjay, what I think he does so well is he really respects history. And he respects history enough to then be able to reimagine it. Because I think, you know, you can't just go without actually going deep into our history before reimagining. And I think he stands for someone who's who's done that beautifully. Thank and you. so aesthetically, la la amazing stores you have, Sanjay. It's absolutely Thank beautiful. You. In fact, all Thank three you. of you. Thank okay. You. So coming to you, uh, Samrit. Forest Essentials now, of course, stands for a very, very unique experience, you know, which is something uh, we now see through this video, which we'll play now before we are, before I ask the question to you, Sandra. Can we have the Forest Essential video? Anuba, sorry, I, I can't. I can't. Wow, that was amazing. Uh, yeah. Samrat, uh, Samrat, am I? Can you hear me? Okay. So what we'll do is, whilst we solve uh, the tech issue with uh, Samrat, we'll, we'll quickly go to Rahul. Again, okay, Samrat, we'll come back to you with your question. Uh, Samrat, we now show a short clipping of Nicobar's products to our audience here before I ask you the question. So maybe have Nicobar's video, please. Ar Aruba, I seem to be having a problem with my signal. I can't hear you clearly. Okay. Okay. Can Samrat, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, okay. Samrat. Give me a minute. Let me just let me just try and fix this. For sure. give me a second. I'm mm -hmm. coming back. Sure. In the meanwhile, we'll you know we'd love to see Nicobar's video now. Wow. Tabri and Breezy. <laughs> and Adi. That was, that was Nikobar is wow. I'm sure our audience is absolutely loving the stunning visuals of all three, you know. We had an amazing uh, video of Raw Mango, Forest Essentials, and Nikobar as well. What a wide variety of products. Wow. So Nikumar, may, you, know, you know, while Raul, while the video is playing and we can see these stunning uh, visuals, maybe we can, you know, talk while the video is going on. It has, you know, you have such a large range of products, all of which are tied to this common theme of being a global Indian. So how does that innovation process work for you with from idea to design to finished product, looking at the wide range of products you have, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, Raul. You know, again, um... Uh, Anuba, I, I want to say that it comes down to clarity on purpose. Mm -hmm. And we never saw ourselves as yes. a product company. Okay. Uh, we've always seen ourselves as a company that wants to shape a certain way of lifestyle and shape a certain way of living. And, and so we only wanted to create products that we wanted to use. And, okay. and frankly, you know, coming back to India, 
with this climate over here, our fabrics are perfect for our climate. And, and so the first part was just being very clear that we are a lifestyle brand. And in fact, I just went back during COVID to one of the notes from my supply chain professor from Harvard professor, Anand Raman. Okay. And, and he said, make sure you always talk about your brand because your products may start with clothing, but what you're trying to do can evolve into anything. And, and so I think, you know, I will tell you just this morning, I want to explain, you know, something we did, which we're doing through COVID is Simran and I have become teachers in mindful leadership. Okay. And this morning, this morning, we, 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 we did our third course at Nicobar, which is eight, eight sessions, two hours each, and a course in mindful leadership. And this third course, we've invited a few customers to join our own teams. So actually, can Nicobar's product be content around mindfulness? Maybe. Uh, and, uh, and, and so it's just about clarity of purpose and shaping. And so that said, I do a lot at Nicobar, uh, but the one thing I'm not allowed to do is everything you've just seen, which is create beautiful products. So I'm not allowed to do any design. And now Sanjay is smiling, okay, because my wife is the creative director, and we have this lovely woman, Aparna Chandra, Rajiv, who you saw over there. We have the most beautiful design team. So I think some of princ principles of great company building is being clear also sometimes on what one cannot do. And, and I cannot uh, do design. Design is an independent voice at Nicoba. And and that is really important for our for our soul. Um, yeah. Sure, but in spite in spite of the fact that all three of you are creative and you know creating a niche and a very 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 international brand, it's also about teamwork, right? And in your own way, you've just told us about that, and that's what our students and our teachers are loving to listen. Some of them may go back to you, you know, when we played the Forest Essentials videos, and it's it's always a very inspiring, uh, you know, inspiring thing to watch what your organization has done. So I'd love to understand a little bit more about your innovation principle and how do you find inspiration for new products in a very ancient science? So I think, uh, you know, and taking from where Sanjay and from Rahul, you know, what you'll do is as you go along in this conversation, you'll find a lot of commonalities in how we work in certain principles, you know, despite different verticals. You know, inspiration comes, I think it's a journey of both, like like Raul said, about having a personality, about understanding and having your own approach to certain things. I think the second thing is also like you're delving into history, trying to figure out which aspect you would like to represent. I mean, I think, um, you know, in terms of, I actually have an interesting anecdote for you because, you know, you hear lots of stories about branding. Most brands have difficulties creating stories right? A lot of brands are born and then try and create the story later. It's very difficult. And what's, 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 what's very rare is for a story to already be there and for the brand to have and take it forward. You know, it's all about evolution. Uh, the name Forest Essentials and ironically, you know, being on the HCL and Shiv Nader chat today uh, actually came uh, from Mrs. Kiran Nader. So um, she actually had, uh, you know, she, we, we have a very close family relationship and she was actually um, you know, when she came back from the US, uh, my mother was looking to see what name she would like to name this venture. And this was, I'm talking about literally 2000, 2001. And uh, <laughs> Mrs. Nader then told her that, you know, I was in this hotel and they had um, a brand called Forest Essentials. And she says, it so suits what you're doing. And it represents everything that you're trying to put together. And that's how the name actually came about. So, you know, there was no market surveys, there was no business plan. Like Sanjay has said earlier, we actually took a lot of things along the way. And, uh, you know, then, of course, we had to grapple with the fact that there is a fossil essentials in, in America. But, uh, you know, we dealt with that. And now, you know, we've trademarked it everywhere. But but it's an interesting, um, you know, story because a lot of things can get made up along the way. And when you have entrepreneurs like this on the panel, you'll see a lot of it that comes out, you know, as we as we keep going ahead. In terms of the brand, in terms of identity, I think, like I told you, if you stay true to the pillars that you are, you know, you're Indian, you're, you're luxurious, you know, you're representing history. So a lot of our packaging, uh, you know, from that perspective represents, you know, the jewel-like tones of India. Again, like Rahul said, it doesn't have to be kitsch. It doesn't have to be, you know, full of peacocks and, you know, elephants and stuff like that. But what we've done is we've taken all those beautiful aspects and then put it in a more contemporary, in a more global way. And I think that's what's been evolving as we've gone along. 
in terms of sustainability, I think, uh, you know, in terms of packaging, we are also very, very clear on the use of plastic. You know, we stopped using shrink wrap, we stopped using bubble wrap, you know, a lot of it uh, that we started using is very recyclable. So that is something that we've, you know, been working on very, very strenuously. You know, Anuba, one, one thing which I find fascinating about Sam and Forest Essentials is, you know, Sam has been able to scale the brand uh, while remaining true to his mom's vision. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that's amazing. I think there's a whole new dimension to explore over there. I highly recommend working with your wife and mother-in-law and, and changing <laughs> around that. So, Sam, I, you know, honestly, it's, it's really important that the brand vision and the brand custodian, which is his mother initially, that vision to scale it while remaining true is a true gift. And, and I'm sure there's lots of interesting stories that Sam can share with us on how he's been able to do that. But I just wanted to acknowledge that I think that's a real achievement for Forrest. No, I think very well said, Raul. And, and to me, as a, a viewer and the user of your products, the one thing which touches me the most, the fact that you make me feel proud as an Indian of my heritage and excellent products that uh, you bring to the world stage. So that's, that's for me personally, an absolutely great thing. So thank you for that. So what I'm going to do now before I take uh, audience questions, because we now have some audience questions also coming in, I'll take one last question, which we planned a little before. So uh, something which is very, very important is the fact that you're working with a lot of partners and all three of you are like, working with suppliers, vendors, and distributors, and store owners, and weavers, and of course the artisans and uh, workers, and all of them in many ways contribute equally and more to your brand. So how does the value sharing work across this chain, you know, so that everybody dry, derives the equal value from the relationship. And all of you could, you know, quickly, uh, you know, give us your thoughts on this. And Sanjay, maybe you, know, you work with a lot of local artisans and weavers. And how do right. you take so, this? So I very well remember my working starting with four rooms, by the way. Okay. And yeah, and uh, I don't know whether it's we all aware of it that whatever we produce still is not we don't have a factory setup we still don't have a house where everyone comes like nine to five and work so it, 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 it was very very difficult for us to create that quality and that product design the layout everything because it's not a factory way where people come and go you know so they it, they still work out from their house and i really wanted to retain that and you know more so if i do that and then if it is happening all over India, then how do I manage to manage it from here? So they were a poor weaver, had they never run a business, Bhagwan Daji and Kishan Daji, we actually, they were a poor weaver and we literally made an organization, which is not an NGO, but we set up a whole business for them. And they become responsible for everything, so they buy their own yarn. So in a way that my business was started to three other small businesses set up in different parts of the area. So they have way to buy the yarn, how to buy it, how to sell it to me, and they're doing everything like that. And imagine that they started when when I is about 2008, and they started with like 5,000 to monthly, and now they are maybe 1,000 times for it. They that's how we have to grow. And they started with four looms, and their looms are like 400 looms also. And at the same time, the wages have gone 10 times. So it is amazing. And at the same time, Roman will be happy people from eight to 10 year old. But I think I'm sure it's very unique to, to, to like, say, the employees who are working in Delhi is very different than artisan working in Kandiri or a dyer working in Bhuj. So I think it varies. And there's not a one formula what applies. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Rahul, you know, maybe uh, you could talk a little bit about it you know, because you work with so many designers and suppliers at Nicobar. And how does your concept of value uh, sharing across the ecosystem work? You know, Anupa, I don't, I don't even find that a difficult question uh, in the sense that our next collection, which I'm very excited about, is, you know, this whole year, somebody asked on the chat, what are the inspiration behind our designs? We're so lucky. Our inspiration is journeys across the Indian Ocean. And as you know, India used to be this amazing trading port. And we were so connected to, right from Muziris, we were so connected to all over. And so this, this season has been inspired by Africa. And the next collection is Ubuntu, right? which is India's take on Africa. And Ubuntu is the most beautiful word. It means I am because we are. And so everything that we are is because of someone else and because of different influences. And, 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 when I, and that's the mindset 
that we approach our business and how we set it up. And so when you have that mindset, then all of a sudden, Nicobar's boundary is not the 180 people who work at Nicobar, right? It is, we had over 100 collaborators for our content on Nico Journal, right from, you know, uh, Seema Sondi Yoga Studio to Blue Tokai, only because, as I said, our purpose was showcasing interesting things happening in India. So when you have that mindset, automatically you're trying to treat everybody as if you're in, in the same organization, right? It's one ecosystem. I'll give you two specific examples, but, but you know, of course you have a vendor negotiation, but you can be very transparent about your economics. You can be very transparent about where your business is, just like you are with your own teams. And so I'll just say two things that anchored me was one, you know, my mother-in-law and my wife are both amazing inspirations for me. And my mother-in-law as Sanjay and, and Sam know, you know, long ago, I think in 1995, wanted to support the craftsman. And has played important roles. Yeah, has played important roles in Sanjay's life also. But with the craftsman, she had a philosophy that I will never negotiate with a craftsman. It was that simple. Wow. Right? Wow. And, and, and as I said, even when we started this Search Inside Yourself course to keep our teams connected, the first thing we did is invite some of our factory partners to join the course. So while it was it rolled out to our team, our factory partner also joined the course. So, you know, I've never had that sense that the boundary of Nicobar ends at Nicobar. I, I just see it as a little more expansive. Beautiful, beautiful. And that, that probably helped Nicobar grow much bigger, you know, in the, in the near future. So, Samrat, your take on this, you know, Forest Essentials, of course, manages to work with suppliers. You're dealing with locally sourced ingredients and they're so essential for your product. So what's your take on uh, you know, having everybody benefit and grow in the. So I think Aruba, I think this is an extremely important uh, aspect and a question to us as well, because the idea is not to just grow ourselves, but just to grow everything around us. So when we talk about it, we talk about community, so right? Nice. We talk about, we don't call a factory, we call it a community workshop. We actually do things that will actually benefit the entire community. So it doesn't have to be just the fact of making products and selling them. But right. So, you know, we actually and again, you know, I, my, my stories, my stories do come out in my in my brand conversations. But, you know, when we opened our first workshop, it was high up in the Himalayas, you know, very close to uh, Rishikesh. And these were villages that had no industrial land. There was no electricity. In fact, there was not even a paved road going up. But Mrs. Kurkandi, my mother, her vision was very clear. She said, we will give back to the people where we started this brand. So we literally went in the middle of nowhere, we opened this workshop and eventually, you know, we talked to the government and we managed to get a road and electricity. But what was interesting is she also, you know, very strongly believes in women empowerment, you know, much, much back, back down. I'm saying talking about 2003, 2004. So she wanted the women of those village to actually come and start working with us because otherwise they had no other livelihood. So, you know, they wanted to, wanted to give her, they wanted to give these women financial independence. They wanted to make sure that they had something to do other than just look after their husbands and their homes. And, you know, when we first started, they actually, the panchayat did not allow them to work because this was something completely alien to them. And we spent two months, you know, actually allowing them to work and gave them financial independence. We opened bank accounts. And, you know, these women are still with us 20 years down the line. They're still with us. And from there, we built up a chain. So we actually educate their children. We make sure that they learn English, computers, and we're talking about in the back of beyond, we've tied up with an NGO. So we've given a circle of life here. And I think this is something that allows our consumers to have an emotional connect because we as founders find it very, very important to our own philosophies and beliefs. And this is, this is like I said, very, very key to what, who we are. What a what a powerful what a what a powerful story! I've been to uh, I've crossed it a couple of times going to that village you're talking about, Sangra. It's absolutely be beautiful to see what you're doing there. So I'm going to now Anubha. take some questions from the audience. Uh, Rahul, I'm going to take some questions from the audience. You were saying something? Yeah, no, I just wanted to share a really interesting story for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. which is during COVID. You know, when I talk about just like Sam, it's a whole ecosystem. You know, what we did during COVID is we decided that we want our guests, our customers to co-create with us. And so what we did is we actually started go doing Zoom calls with 15 to 20 customers at a time. Love and, and, our, 
and I'll share with you something that came out of it and how beautiful this process is when you can expand your view of who's really creating the brand. Because I just don't think it's Nicoba who creates the brand. The best example is Royal Enfield, where I think it's not Royal Enfield who created the brand, but the community who created the brand. And that's always been my aspiration to have the community also create the brand. So what happened in this is when we were getting on the Zoom call with 20 customers, one customer says, wait, 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 wait. Before we start, I want to tell you, I am wearing Nicoba right now. And then three other customers say, I'm also wearing Nicoba. I'm drinking from my Nicobar mug. Right. And then the conversation suddenly turned into, and this is in the second week of COVID, uh, in the first week of April or second week of April. The conversation turned to how Nicoba actually, because of its fabrics, is perfect for wearing at home. Absolutely. And, and you, know, you know, we have not even thought of that use case. And so that conversation turned into, why don't we have a Nicobar at home campaign? We've always thought about our home products for home, but we had not thought of our clothing for home. And it was thanks to a customer and the conversation with the customer that this got co-created. Great, shows what a great connection to have with the customer. So let me now take, uh, take some questions from the audience. So we have uh, Bhuvanesh Varun who's asking, question to the three aesthetic entrepreneurs he's saying, what is one of the interesting obstacles you faced while you begin the startup and you know, startup and what helped you cross over that? So we'll do a quick round, you know, maybe we'll start with you, Sanjay. Well, I really thought when I started the obstacle to me, the way we looked at luxury. What we our own self, the Indians, the way they looked at beauty. So, so for everything which is a foreign made was a luxury. I think it's around 2008. And I think that was a big obstacle in studio time. Whatever is um, handmade actually was looked down, which is very strange. I mean, I was come from village, everything is made in a factory, kind of a more luxury. The things which are produced by hand in India was in, you know, I mean, they, they do it in village also, let's say, the, the, the Burton, the, the Mittika Burton, Yafid Patal, or the you know, the, or the Khadi, or, or shoes, duties, everything. I don't think so that they had that kind of respect what they, they deserve it. I think the stereotype of that, and once you know it is unique, and it's very difficult to believe it is unique because you know things are already exist before you. Like, like, but there are still people. Someone come in, and suddenly they there is a certain you know um, a great uh, there is a great there is equation. The samikaran happens right, and there's a great unique chain of plus a DNA, and what it is, what it is goes to them. I mean, there are so many people come and they. They come up with an idea, they have a confidence in them, and they believe it and it's become the brand. And that's what I believe in Sari too. I mean, I know it was Sari always existed, but I had a certain belief in that, you know, Sari is not enough, I say it is a modern garment for me. You know, it, I always thought of it like in a radio where you had to be go to know, one signal, look at that, you can play radio wherever you go, in a car or wherever. So I really never thought the Sari is gone. So I really work with it. There's a certain use to certain DNA which you know inside the confidence. If you know you believe in it, I think that's hold there. Okay. Okay, that's that's good. Would you like to take a take a go at it, Amrit, on what our young sure, guests sure. are asking? So I think and I think uh, you know, um, I want to resonate what Sanjay is saying. I said trying to, you know, back in the day, and I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about years ago, trying to sell a luxury Indian brand to an Indian consumer at a premium pricing, especially in my segment, mm. and, you know, was a tough sell because ultimately, if you ever, you know, lived through those years and you bought, you know, the Yardley soaps and you bought the Dove soaps and you bought everything was, you know, at the, at the, at the, at the mass end of the market. And then you yeah. had, you know, a kind well, of body I, shop, which had, you know, just starting to come I in. Do, sorry. I do remember Dove, that was around 32 rupees. <laughs> And we all respected that time it was like 60, you know, come from abroad and there's a one beautiful model coming from <laughs> I absolutely it. I didn't know then there was a handmade shop as well. Now look at what has happened. That's exactly what I was trying to say. True. The handmade product has so much of luxury, uniqueness, but we were yeah. very yeah. proud of it. Absolutely well said, Sanjay. Okay. Back to you, Samrit. Absolutely. Would you like that? And, 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 and the point was, um, Sure, and it, and the point was when you know you had those twenty rupee soaps and the thirty rupee soaps, we actually 
had a hundred rupee soap, and I still mm. remember it because you know we were we were making it, and everybody you know we had like probably like four employees, and they were like, "You're mad. Who the who is going to buy a hundred rupee soap? You know, handmade soap." And we, you know, and again, you know, just to answer, you know, the the question that we've we've got is is you have to stay strong in your belief. You have to believe in what you're doing. You have to be patient, and you know, ultimately, you'll overcome all obstacles. Of course, you need to make sure you have the right product. And the right USP, but but the point is, it, this is a long-term game. This is not a short game. It's not something that will show you results immediately, you know. So I think um, from that perspective, I think the hardest obstacle was actually selling India to Indians. And today, we have overtaken anything that you've seen from outside, whether it's a Kiehl's or a Body Shop, or I don't want to name every brand, but but the point is that all we we are we're way ahead of all the international brands in India, and that is a real testimony to to being an Indian brand. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So we'll take one more. We'll take a quick question. During these unprecedented times, Kish is saying that during these unprecedented times, with masses reluctant to step out and get into a store, how are brand owners changing their business models to maintain sales and growth? You know, Rahul, maybe we'll start with you, and you know, followed by Samrat uh, and Sanjay on this. You know, um, Anuba, I, I I did say this uh, maybe in the backstage that you know I almost feel guilty for saying this, but in a way, uh, it's really tough for a lot of people out there. Mm -hmm. And yet, I feel like COVID has come to us as a reminder for a really important reason, mm -hmm. because the path that we were down is just not sustainable. And and so Nicobar, I would say we first got shocked by what was happening, and we said, will we survive this? But after about two, three weeks, we started reimagining to, to Kish's question. We started reimagining what Nicobar could look like. And I can't tell you how energized I felt. It's, I've been feeling so energized over the last three months, like the launch of Nicobar. It was that exciting. Because what I tell people is 2030 is happening in 2020. So if you had a view of what the world could look like in 2030, it's actually happening now. And so if you thought your digital footprint was going to be you know, 25, 30, 40 percent of your sales in 10 years, it's going to happen now. And and so that's what we did. We reimagined a lot of things and 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 we redoubled our effort. So, for example, as I gave you the example, consumer research, which is normally done by going, speaking to people, phone calls, emails. We did it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really stepped up on our digital business. And uh, and so that's really the way we've been reimagining. But more importantly, we changed the way we work. And so we actually used Zoom to connect. We had you know weekly open houses, completely transparent. We came closer. The theme for Nicobar was connect and contribute. So I think there's an external perspective on the business model being more uh, digital. Uh, then there's an internal perspective on how we connect with each other, which is actually very important because the more we're connected as a people, the more the interesting ideas that emerge. And in our stores, our heroes, the stores have been our heroes. You know, they're out there and, uh, and they decided to do the training for the products themselves. They said, we have time now. We're going to create our own training materials instead of the marketing team having to create. And so suddenly we found these bunch of entrepreneurs in the retail teams who were creating their own training materials for the stores. And you know it, if you create your own training materials, that effort makes you much stronger. So I think there's some beautiful initiatives that have come out through this. Great, great. Uh, some of your views on how the stores are coping up uh, during these times and how the customers are reacting to this challenge. So, you know, I think this this is, has been a tough time for all. I mean, we have to say that, you know, for the first three months, uh, like Raul was saying, it was a complete shock. You know, all the stores shut down. And then even in the online space, um, you know, the government only allowed the essential commodities. So, you know, it was it was a tough period. Again, we did it as a community. We made sure that nobody was laid off. Everyone has paid their salaries. You know, that whole aspect was to make sure that we stay like a family because those are the values that we built the company on. That was one. The second thing is, again, you know, we started to adapt. So one is, again, and I see the commonalities, whether I speak to Sanjay or whether I speak to Raul, we started doing Zoom calls as well. You know, it's it's something to note here is that Forest Essentials, 76% of our sales comes from our loyalty customers. So these are people who already know the brand very well, right? They've already, I mean, to the point that they could walk into, say, my store in Khan Market, and they even know what shelf the product is lying in. I mean, literally, they can be in and out of that store in 10 minutes without even having a conversation because that's how, you know, that's how it works. 
So what we did was we actually then said, okay, if you can't come to the store, let my doctors talk to you on Zoom. You know, let my let my let my store managers talk to you on Zoom because there's a comfort level. There's you know you know the brand at all. As well as we started doing home delivery, so you know you have to start making the best. So what we used is every store has its own database, and we mm -hmm. said, you know what, not comfortable to come, I will send someone to you. You tell me what you need. So that's that's one aspect of it. And I think while in terms of so and and you know in one aspect of it, and the thing is that again, digital is going to get much more prominent. This is accelerating it. You know, I had in my business plan said today, you know, 17, 18 percent of my business in 2024 will be 30 percent. But like Raul said, I suspect it will be closer between 50 and 60 percent of the business. There is no doubt in this. I will not take out my stores, but I will evolve my stores into touch points. I will make it brand ambassadors. But mm -hmm. eventually, it is going to move online. Okay. okay. Well, Sanjay, what's your take on this? I know. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. See, I've been loving you never say never. So, mm -hmm. what I will be thinking, I think the businessman needed that fluidity. A flexibility and tell you about me i never shop form and i sound very outdated and old-fashioned i don't really go digitally and buy things mm. i always about the experience and touch and feel and especially when we create like handroom luxury so the biggest biggest ever step what we have taken and we launched our website two days ago so that's oh. that, <laughs> exactly you that. That. that all happened due to corona and we didn't take us a threat as an opportunity. And that's all I'm going to say that, you know, every day is exam and every day is an opportunity. That's how businessmen has to see it. Whatever comes in way, we need to think as a solution and we need to see there's a future and an opportunity. I think that's, as I said, never say never. And don't also move to your egos and why you started and what the product is. And I think then what is yours? I just wanted to say, because I know there are potential young entrepreneurs, I didn't answer yes. the question on, on, uh, on uh, how do you overcome obstacles? So I won't talk about my obstacles in the interest of time, mm. but I can tell you uh, the number one way to overcome your obstacles is having a great team. As an entrepreneur, it's, it's you know, you're supposed to have this energy for your team, but what has helped me is having an amazing team who sometimes gives you energy at the time that you most need it. And, and not everyone has this luxury, but each and every one of my obstacles has been overcome because I have great co-founder in my wife. Uh, and I think that, you know, that initial five, 10 people that you bring on, that's the team that if it sticks together, and that's where Aparna has played a role with us, Rajiv has played a role, Divya, Vandana, these are all people who started with us. And I can tell you, that's where the energy for overcoming obstacles comes from. Uh, and, and the rule of thumb I use with people is, if you keep walking into a meeting, just notice whether the people uplift your energy or bring your energy down. Those who bring your energy down don't belong in your culture. <laughs> well said. So while you know, Raul, you've already touched on it and Sanjay, you also touched on it briefly. But, you know, I want you to, you know, maybe Tamra, you can take that question. You know, you've spoken less on it. But I want you to gaze at the crystal ball, uh, Tamra, and provide a message for the budding entrepreneurs. And there are many of you, many of them listening to you today. You know, how can they continue to strive for growth with a purpose, especially in all three of you represent growth and building a brand with a purpose. And Tamra, over to you. Would you like to answer that? To the message to and advice to the young entrepreneurs. You know, the, the crystal ball is a bit of a hard one, but but what I can tell you from personal experience and from what I follow as a philosophy, I think, you know, whatever the future holds, I think every crisis provides an opportunity. You must not look at it as a crisis. You must see how you can define yourself, how you can define what you want, who you want to be, and use this crisis as an opportunity. I think it's very important. I think besides, you know, whether it's pre-COVID, post-COVID, I think some principles still remain strong. I think whether it's in terms of hard work, whether it's in terms of, of vision, whether it's in terms of patience, I think all of these principles will never change. But I think in terms of, of how you look at this, I think always try and, and try and take this as an opportunity because I think a lot of great companies, a lot of great brands are built out of crisis. Well, I would say, you know, I think a lot of people have ideas and a lot of people think of one, one thing. 
I'm sure a lot of people also think like Ambani or anyone or Bill Gates, but I'm sure there are very few people who do what they think, you know, they believe in. I think the between thinking and doing is a very big a difference. And at the same time, I really think, you know, you, you can read in magazine or book or stories or inspiration. There are thousands of those, you know. There are, but I don't think that they, they're going to be applied to you. You know, their failure success won't apply to you, I think. I think any business who have made a mark, they are very unique in their businesses too. So I really think is that, you know, one needs to find their own path, believe in what you are, believe in your uniqueness. I'm telling you, it sounds very like an excuse, but there is a truth in it. Where I came from a village, anyone can do anything, you know. People come from the city or this or Japan or anywhere. So you think that it's not going to happen, or oh, Ari is outdated, who's going to buy it now? And that's kind of thing like that. Everyone's going to tell you. If you know it, if, uh, as I said, you, you may read inspiration and failure, but you know, none of that applies to you. So don't believe in it. Just make your own. <laughs> good. Well, that, that's a good one, Sanjay. Thank you so much. So, you know, now that we are, now that we are near the end, I'm going to do with we start with you uh, one global icon that comes to your mind you would listen to the I'm sorry Aruba you you're cutting off to me. Yeah. He's frozen and sometimes let me repeat one global icon that comes to your mind who could be synonymous with your uh, a global what? I'm not audible. N now you are tell me again. A global icon that comes to your mind, a one global icon that comes to your mind, which is synonymous with your brand. Samrat, with you. Leonard Lauder. Okay, wow. Round for you, the same question. <laughs> um, you, know, <laughs> the, you know, see, I, I actually have so many people I admire. Uh, there's so many people I admire. And I learn a little. I, I always see something to learn from some, everybody. So I'm just going to take, I think we just lost Anuga. She'll come back. But maybe maybe I can keep going. But, but you know, I, I've always admired Richard Branson because I think business should be fun. And and that's how I've tried to create Nicobar with a with a lightness to it, with a with a fun spirit to it. So so that's uh, uh you know, that's the person I would pick on. Um and the ability to create okay. multiple businesses. Okay. Hello. Sanjay, I think you're on. Yeah, can you hear me? Well, my icons are from different fields, from politics to social to religion, I would say. So I've been saying that I I don't read much, but I think I read people and I like observation. Okay. So, so uh, inspiration I think from all over. Hello? And I, I don't know whether you can, I'm audible, but okay, I think so I'll, I'll move on to, you know, we've lost Sanjay, so we'll go on to, uh, okay. Sanjay, can you hear me? Yeah. You know, I believe, I think I'm a traveler. So I'm going to say that, that Tamil philosopher said that, you know, the life is in the onion and there's nothing in end. And I absolutely believe in it actually. So I'm, I'm just opening one layer to the another. I think she's disappeared. Okay, we are back. <laughs> Thanks to the fact that <laughs> we're just connected online. So sometimes we have a bit of a bit of a tech issue. So Sanjay was asking you one global icon that comes to your mind, synonymous with your brand. And it's as, an I, I, as I did say, there are many, I said in, in, in politics, social, fashion, and craft and, and people who had movement. So there are not one, I think there are many. And I did say that I'm a traveler and I've been traveling. And I do remember a Tamil philosopher said, life is an onion. Okay. And how well you travel, it matters. There's nothing in that. Okay, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Samrat, three forest essential products that you personally use. I know many people would like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, um, I don't endorse my I, I don't endorse my shampoo because I'd be the worst brand ambassador for it. But <laughs> in terms of the three products, <laughs> okay. I'd be I'd say I'd say I, I use I use a light lotion, I use my soap, yeah, and I use my facial wash. So these are the three products that I never leave home without. I'm sure I'm sure many people have made a note of that. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Rahul, your top three best-selling products. Uh, my uh, my favorites are the Shillong jammies, which is a mix between a pant and a, and a pajama. Um, okay. The and then I then for entertaining we have the thali, uh, the brass thalis, and I start every morning uh, with my kulhar uh, for my uh, for my espresso. Um, and uh, and look, my nawab shirts too. Sorry, I can't. I'm not. I'm gonna get killed tomorrow by my designers. <laughs> For collecting on the and I told you I don't have any voice in design. You put me in a difficult spot at the end of this, Anubha. Okay, no, no issues for that. Sanjay, last question to you. You work, you work with so many different fabrics. If you had to pick one, which one would you choose? Mushroom. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, that's good. So with that, you know, I'd like to thank all three of you. It's been such an inspiring conversation and such an interesting conversation. I'm sure all our students and all the guests and the teachers and staff and all our HCL community which has joined in have been so inspired listening to the three of you. You bring so much pride to all the Indians out there with the fantastic lifestyle products that you're creating. Thank you so much for your time. Today. Thank you so much, Anubha. Thank, thank you, you Anubha. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and, you. And it's so lovely. It's so lovely to see the foundation doing this work for young people around India. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'd love Thank to see you. you at the campus one day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.